Hello everyone, we are back for a long awaited grow um, of basil, micro basil. Um, I've been having requests for this video for, for quite some time. I figured I'd go ahead and do it, um, but go ahead and hunker down because this is a long one. This is definitely a few weeks. Um, so we're actually gonna be growing three kinds of basils today. Uh, we're gonna start off um, with our Genovese basil. Um, this is a really common basil that you find um, like when you go to the grocery store. Um, then we have our opal basil, opal basil, which is a very, it's very purple color. It's a really beautiful purple. Um, it's very eye appealing and our customers love that. Um, and then our third one, uh, which True Leaf Market just sent us to try out here. Um, this is our lemon basil and it definitely tastes a lot different than these two. Um, so we're going to go ahead and grow all three of them at the same time and, uh, you know, just, you know, go with that, I guess. Right. So the first thing we're definitely gonna need here is um, a couple trays. I already have these, um, you know, filled with coco coir. Um, I'll go ahead and put a link up here uh, with how we, we use coco coir block and, and how we create that and how we mix it with water um, to create our coir and how to uh, basically put it into a tray. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, we, we, you, we really use a very minimal amount of um, coco coir. We can get a coco coir block and I'd say anywhere between 20 to 25 trays of microgreens from one block. Um, and I can usually find it on sale sometimes for about $4.99 a block. Uh, so it's so cheap. Um, that and at the same time, there's no nutrients in coco coir. Um, so anything that you want to add, it's, you know, you know basically what you're adding. It's, it's seed, water, and then whatever else you add. There's, there's no guessing with, you know, of all kinds of soils and, and other things that I've seen, um, you know, people grow in uh, where you, you really just, unless you're looking at a bag full of, 400 ingredients. I don't like to do that with my customers, right? I like everything as organic as humanly possible. Um, but that's just my method. Everybody's different. So let's go ahead and get, get started with this. So we're going to start off. I'll start off with the lemon here. And for all of our basils, we do about 10 grams of seed. So we'll zero out our scale, obviously. Uh, right around there. That's beautiful. This is a little herb jar. Um, had herbs in it and we washed it out. We use that for a seed shaker. I absolutely love it. Works perfectly. The seeds are very tiny in this, so you really don't need many. Um, that's why we only do about 10 grams just because they are so small. All right. It's looking really good. Okay, so that's our lemon there done. Go ahead and clean this bag up here, out of the way. Um, then we're gonna go to do our opal basil. This is that nice, beautiful purple basil that we have. We'll do another 10. Ah, we got 11, but no big deal. Try to get it spread as evenly as possible. It's the hardest part about sewing, even though to me it's getting to be pretty easy. <laughs> it really helps to have like a little decent seed shaker. I won't lie, if you're doing it by hand, I don't know. I always found doing stuff by hand to be, it was a little bit more of a pain. I can never get stuff quite as even that, and it took a lot longer too. This saves you a lot of time. Our Genovese. Another 10 here. That should do it, almost nine. 10, ah, of course. <laughs> right past 10, right to 11. Now 
instead of doing this, I'm kind of seeing seeds sometimes fly off and go into the other tray. So <laughs> we might have a few that's mixed a little bit, but uh, no big deal. So, okay. So now that we have everything sprinkled on, we'll go ahead and get our hose. Okay, we'll set this to mist. We're just gonna spray on really nicely here. You're actually gonna see almost immediately, they form this jelly-like barrier around the seed almost immediately um, when you water these. But what happens is, is it's very sticky. So when we stack these, we always talk about in other videos, don't mess around and don't fiddle with your greens and germination, right? Well, this is definitely one of them where you definitely don't want to fiddle. Because when you stack that jelly-like membrane around the seed is going to stick to the tray on top of it. We gave it a really good soaking because we're gonna leave this in germination for the next like five days or so. And then we're gonna leave it in blackout for a little bit longer. Wow, it's not cool. You can already see it forming. It's like, <laughs> this one we did first, this one we did second. Wow, you can really see it forming that nice jelly-like um, you know, barrier around the seed. That's really neat looking. So. so like I was saying, what's happening here though is, is that when we stack these trays, this is, this is very gooey and sticky like, right? So it's gonna stick to the tray on top of it. So my point being is, is that once we stack these trays, we do not want to touch them for five days. I mean, not even peak, nothing, because you're gonna rip you know, the seeds right up and you're gonna rip the, you know, if it's trying to germinate in there and the roots are trying to grow, you're just gonna rip it right out. Um, so by day five, usually what happens here is, is that, uh, you know, it's the, that membrane is gone um, and there's enough that have germinated, uh, the, the roots have really gone in, uh, they've, structured, they've structured themselves and so forth, that day five is usually the day that we actually move this into a blackout phase. Um, somewhere around there, you know, give or take a day, obviously, but, um, so yeah. You can actually tell that the, the lemon basil is actually a little bit thicker of a seed and a little bit thicker of a membrane here. It's, it really stands out. We gave it the same exact amount of seed, 10 grams as everything else here. And the Genovese and the Opal, um, you can tell are a little bit smaller and the membrane just isn't quite as large. Um, but I mean, that's no big deal. Um, just interesting to, to see the differences and, and so forth. So, so anyways, again, so we're gonna stack these just like so. Here we go. Once we do it, we can't undo it. Okay, just like so. And we're gonna take another tray, put it on top here. And because this tray is, is that green tray, um, it is a little see-through. So I always put that extra black tray on top. It's always important to do that just to make sure that it stays as black as possible. So we'll do that. Go ahead and put a weight on top, 15 pounds. There we go. And then we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna put it in germination for about five days. And now we trust the process, right? Don't touch it, don't peek at it. We'll come back in five days and then we'll lift those trays up for the first time, all right? So stick with us, stay tuned. Okay, and welcome back to day number five of our basil grow. Um, and we have everything still stacked here with the weight on it. So we're gonna go ahead and take the weight off. Just like so. Okay, we have... Up first here, uh, we have our Genovese basil. And then we have our Opal basil. And then we have our lemon basil. And everything seems to have germinated very well here. 
um, like I was saying before, the seeds get very sticky. So if you start playing with them and, and lifting them up and things, you know, you're going to have some issues. It's going to stick to the bottom of the, uh, of the tray here. Um, but as you see, they lifted off very nicely since we waited for, you know, about five days. Uh, that, that stickiness coating that they get on the seeds uh, tends to kind of fade away uh, after several days and after they are done pretty much germinating. Um, so that's what we're looking for here. Um, again, this is day five and this is, this is looking really good. <clears throat> this is ready to go um, into a blackout phase um, for a few days. What we're really looking for through blackout is um, basically what we're doing is we're tricking them into uh, trying to grow upwards and grow tall in order to find light. So what we do is we starve them of, of light by putting uh, black trays on top. Um, and then again, what they're gonna try to do is they're gonna try to grow tall. Um, so we're gonna definitely leave these in blackout for a couple days, being that they're, so, they're such a short crop. So we wanna try to stretch them as much as possible so when we cut, you know, we get plenty of crop. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So I got three blackout trays here. I'm literally just going to take them like so. Just put the tray right on top. And just put each one on a rack like that. This, this purple is just so pretty. I can already see it. It's just, it's gorgeous. It's just a pretty crop. I really love it. The purple is a little bit more expensive. I should say probably a lot more expensive, about 100% more expensive um, than like a Genovese. Um, but I mean, it is purple and people tend to gravitate towards color, right? So, so there we go. So we will leave those into a blackout state um, for a few days and uh, we'll come back in a few days and see what they look like. So stay tuned. Okay, we are back to day number seven of our basil grow. Um, we've had this in blackout for the last two days. Um, basically our goal blackout is to make sure that, um, you know, we trick the plant into putting it in the dark and the plant wants to grow up towards the light. So that kind of stretches out the stalk a little bit, right? So that's the objective of blackout and because Basil is such a short crop, blackout's very important to make sure you get as much length as possible, to get as much crop as possible, and also makes it easier to cut. Otherwise, it's just too close to the medium. There's really no point of growing basil if, you know, if it doesn't grow tall enough to, to really get a crop out of it, right? So, um, we're gonna go ahead and take these off. That is our Genovese basil. This is our opal basil. And this is our lemon basil. And these are looking terrific. Uh, this is a really good length. Um, again, we've had these in blackout for two days now. Uh, you really can't go much more than this with basil. Uh, basil tends to stall out a little bit if you keep it in blackout too long. Um, and this is, this is a, a pretty good length. This is about what I see basil grown to um, for the most part with uh, just about any grower that I've ever seen or met. Um, so we're going to go ahead and lift these up. I can definitely tell that they're going to need water. Obviously we haven't given them water in a very long time. I think it's been what, seven days. So we haven't watered these except for day one. So we're definitely going to give these water today. I do have my ocean solution mix here. Um, and this is, we actually, uh, you can't be saying all my videos, but uh, one half an ounce of this for every one gallon of water. So I have a five gallon drum here that I keep water in. So I'll put about two and a half ounces of this inside here. And again, our co cocoa coir it has absolutely no nutrients in it whatsoever, right? Um, so we're basically just growing with water and seed and that's it. And that's why I like to add just a, a little bit something extra, but it's also extremely, extremely organic. Um, this is basically just concentrated uh, minerals right from the ocean. You know, I don't like growing with the pro mixes and all kinds of stuff. I, I just feel like they're, they're dirty. I know that it's good for like a garden and things like that. I just don't like growing with it from microgreens. There's so much stuff in it. Um, and I just, I like to grow my product as organic as humanly possible. Um, and that's why I only just use a touch of this. So 
not calling anyone out if you use, you know, anything else. Um, I'm just saying it's what works for me. Um, you know, obviously it's completely your choice. It's your business, you know, or your hobby if you're a, a hobby grower. Um, so let me go ahead and get a measuring cup here. And we're going to lift these up one at a time here. And I'm going to put in, they haven't had water in quite some time. I'm going to say I'm going to put in about a cup of water each here. It's kind of hard for you to see me do this just because there's trays all over. So you're just going to have to trust me here. <laughs> just putting in a cup of water. So. Okay, you can see that one a little bit better. So basil is a very, very slow grow. Um, so I think what I'm going to do here is, is I'm going to show you basil one day at a time for the first couple of days here um, while it starts to fill out a little bit. Uh, but then I think what we're going to do is we're going to skip to maybe like every other day just because it, it almost does nothing on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, it's going to be really hard to see a noticeable difference. Um, so this is going to be a quite a long grow. So again, just doing every single day, just watering. I mean, we're really going to be doing anything besides watering from this point forward. So, uh, you know, we'll go ahead and introduce these to light. Um, you know, again, come back in a day or so and uh, we'll see what they're doing. So we'll go ahead and do that. This purple is just so beautiful. So gorgeous. It's pretty grow. So. All right, we'll come back tomorrow and we'll see how they're uh, holding up. So I'll see you soon. Okay, we are back to day number eight for our basil grow here. And everything's looking pretty good. The green seems to actually be opening up a little bit faster than the purple. And our purple heel actually kind of has a little um, a little bit of green kind of mixed into it. And I actually find that with a lot of the purples of all different kinds of microgreens, you're gonna get green mixed in. I'm not sure why, I'm not sure if the seed get mixed in when they're sorting it or what's going on, but um, it looks really good. The cotyledons are really starting to open up here on the greens. Again, the purple, not so much, but I'm sure it'll get there in the next day or two. Um, like I was saying before, this is a really slow grow. Um, so I'm probably going to do one more video tomorrow of what this really looks like from a day-to-day -day basis. And then after that, we're going to skip to kind of every other day, just again, because it's so long. So, but let's go ahead and check the water on these. I can lift them up and actually kind of feel. They are a little light here. So I'm going to go ahead and get some water. We are using our ocean mineral water for this again. This is kind of hard to see because I have these all lined up here. So, um, but I'm going to probably use, I'm going to say about a cup, cup and a half of water here. Just fill up the bottom of that reservoir there for each one. Just like so. Yeah, this one over here was a little drier. So I'm going to give it a little bit more. Perfect. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and put them right back on the shelf again. All three. There we go, just like that. And we'll come back tomorrow and we'll see what they look like. See you shortly. Okay, welcome back to day number 10 of our basil grow. Uh, so I said we were going to originally come back for day number nine, um, but I noticed on day number nine that there really wasn't hardly anything that changed at all. Uh, the cotyledons really weren't quite opening up yet, and uh, so and I didn't even have to water it. I lifted the trays on a shelf, and they still had plenty of water. So I literally just left um, the basil on the shelf for day number nine. We didn't do anything at all. Um, and here we are day number 10. And I'm actually starting to see quite a bit of a change on day number 10. Um, the cotyledons are really starting to open out and grow out a little bit more. Uh, this, you know, comparing kind of, you know, from crop to crop, we sowed these all the same um, weight. I believe we did about uh, 10 grams each on these. I would say uh, over here is the lemon. The lemon's doing pretty good. Um, the uh, the opal right here, this this 
beautiful purple, I think is probably doing the best, best. I'm seeing it. It's the most full. It is a little lag behind as far as the Catalinas aren't quite as big as the others, but I can definitely see a difference in density. This seems to be like the highest density for sure. Um, and then our Genovese basil is really kind of, it, it, it's a little bit, uh, you know, it's not quite as dense. Um, they're a little uneven in the grow a little bit here. Um, again, we, I mean, we sewed everything the exact same way here. Um, but I would definitely say that, um, our purple is probably, you know, in the lead here as far as, you know, being the best grow so far out of these three. Um, uh, but we'll see, we'll see how it goes. So, um, I'm definitely going to lift these up. Um, they're going to lean a little bit of water, not too much. Basil really doesn't need a lot of water. It really doesn't soak up that water because there's such a little change from day to day. Uh, you know, they don't grow really fast like some of our other microgreens grow. Uh, it's a very stagnant, slow, boring grow. <laughs> so you just want to make sure, you know, that they have enough water. Don't overwater them, obviously. Uh, but, just, you know, just keep an eye on them. It's real, real kind of chill, chill grow for sure. Uh, but we'll give it a little bit of water here. Just make sure they're topped off. I'll start over here. So I'm probably giving them three quarters of a cup. Not much. You can't really see because it's kind of behind the tray here, but I mean, it's the easiest way for me to water like this. Uh, yeah, about a three quarters of a cup. Um, they're dry, but they're, they're still a little wet, but you know, there's not like a, a whole bunch of water sloshing around the bottom of these trays by any means. Um, they're just very damp, but that's about it. So yeah, perfect. Three quarters of a cup for about each one of them. Perfectly fine. So we'll just go ahead and put it right back in light again. Like so. One, two, three. Obviously this is much easier um, when you're kind of doing this, um, you know, out without being on camera. Um, you know, traditionally I'll just come up over here, lift the tray up a little bit, see if it needs a little bit of water. Uh, peek at the crop, make sure it's doing okay. Um, if it needs water, I just lift up right here, give it a little bit of water and kind of move on. Um, real quick process, obviously taking out here and showing you guys, is, it's a little bit more tedious um, in, a, in a process, right? But I really want to, um, you know, show you what's going on with it, obviously. So, um, so anyways, we'll come back in two days. Tomorrow, they're really not going to change. Like I said, basil's really slow. Uh, so we'll come back on day number 12. We'll, so we'll see you then. Okay, welcome back to day number 12 of our basil grow um, and looking over these so I would say that the Genovese over here uh, seems to I'm not going to call it a total failure because uh, this is pretty much still harvestable uh, I probably wouldn't give this to a restaurant looking like this uh, it's a little spotty in germination um, I'd have to grow it again to kind of really get a feel for maybe what might have happened with this one um, it's I mean some of it's grown perfectly fine, but I'd say that we're lacking a little bit of germination with this seed, and that happens sometimes. Um, so that's kind of a, a good experience to kind of have on film here with you guys, is that not every grow is gonna go absolutely perfect. Um, as I mean, you saw that we planted this the exact same way, the exact same amount of density as the other two basils, and the other two date basils are actually thriving quite well compared to the Genovese. Um, so, I mean, again, sometimes that, that just happens. So, um, but anyways, the opal basil, I think is one of the best here. Um, it's just, it's so full and so fluffy um, and looks, looks absolutely great. Um, I would 100% give this to a restaurant looking like this. Um, and then our lemon basil. So this is, th it, there's a little, like a few little gaps here and stuff like that, but this will actually fill out over the next few days, believe it or not, if you let it continue to grow. Um, and this is looking, this is in pretty good shape. Um, this is almost to the extent of, of our opal basil here. Um, but uh, again, I, it looks great. So um, I'm very happy with this grow as well. Um, the lemon, I can actually smell a lemon from here. The lemon basil actually has almost like a black licorice scent. Um, I think I've said before, and um, it, it has a little bit of that black or licorice hint when you taste it as well. And But it's not in a bad way. Even if you don't like black licorice, like my wife doesn't like it, um, she loves this. I don't know how to explain it. It's just a different flavor altogether. Um, I don't know why they call it lemon basil because I just don't get any lemon out of it when I taste it. But, you know, it's what it is. So, um, 
Now, so I'm gonna do something different here today. Um, and I've actually done this in a few of my other videos before. So what you can do is, so you could harvest basil today. It's about day 12. This is actually grown pretty fast, believe it or not, compared to some of the other times I've actually grown basil. Um, but today, so instead of harvesting this, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drop two of these off at a restaurant um, for, they want to try basil, they said. Um, but they want to have the basil good. They're not going to use it a whole bunch. They're only going to use it for like really specialty type stuff. So it has to stay good for anywhere from a week or two, which is why I suggested basil to begin with, because it grows very slow. So when we give this to a restaurant as a tray, you know, they're going to be able to clip this for absolutely a week or two, um, you know, without it overgrowing itself or any of those types of things. Um, again, which is why I love basil for that reason, because it, it can handle that. Unlike some of your other microgreens, you can't do that with a, a broccoli, for instance. A broccoli just outgrow itself in a few days, um, along with some of your other microgreens. Um, so I'm actually going to take the Genovese. I'm actually going to use, um, I'm actually going to put this in a, a spaghetti sauce myself that I'm going to make making tonight. So I'm just going to be harvesting this and just tossing it in there and then maybe plating it over top a little bit, a little bit of garnish as well. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do with the Genovese over here. So I'm going to put that aside for me. Um, and then these two, like I said, I'm going to drop these off at a restaurant today. Now we can absolutely push these for another week or two and you can grow this as, as long as you want, this basil. That's what's so cool about basil is I've actually grown it. So it's actually almost like it bubbles out the true leaf. You can actually see the true leaf when it comes out, it kind of bubbles out almost like a bubble and it gets a really strong, vibrant, you know, basil type of taste, which is one of the reasons why we love basil so much. Um, and so again, you don't have to stop at this point. I'm only stopping at this point because I'm going, you know, to a restaurant, you don't have to. Keep on growing it, you know. Experiment with basil. It's actually one of the fun things to grow because there's so many different times that you could harvest this crop and have it still do like different things and different tastes and you know, different plating. It's all kinds of stuff. So, um, but yeah, guys. So I hope you learned something with basil today. This was a little fun grow. Um, I don't usually do a variety grow too often. I think we're going to start doing it a little bit more, uh, just because there are a few other crops that out there that do have. Uh, quite a large variety. Um, I think mustards, I grow up to like six different types of mustard, if not more. Um, so anyways, hope you liked this video and uh, we'll see you next grow. So bye-bye. Hello everyone, Peter here from Princeton Microgreens. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. Also, if you have any ideas, suggestions, or questions, feel free to leave them below in the comment box. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.